Oh my it. gosh! Watch the motors. Watch the motors. <sighs> Keep reeling. We're here. Let's see what it is. Today is a second day of fishing with Gale Force prototypes. We have Amanda here fishing with the our snapper rod. This which is, is not the actual snapper rod, but it's the exact same blank. So which means that's the same rod, but obviously guys, we're not gonna be giving you guys pink rods. Well, right, we're gonna be doing red and black. That's gonna be our color, and it's actually gonna look similar to that bottom rod right there. So we will show that to you. I already fished the bottom rod a little bit, but we're just getting some extra, uh, what would you call it? Extra, extra reps. Extra reps. We're getting extra reps in today, and we're gonna be fishing with our snapper rods, our bottom rods, our spinning rods, and that's kind of what today is. So today is prototype day number two in lots of work, making sure everything is fine-tuned and perfect. My name's Amanda. My name is Emily. Welcome to our channel, Gale Force Twins. This rod right here is what we were calling our do-it-all rod. You may remember those videos when we were in Washington, we were going over the build process of fishing rods. And this blank right here, we're obsessed with it, we love it. We were gonna call it something along the lines of the do-it-all rod and we asked you guys for your input. What did you like? What did you think we should name it? But it's our 15 to 30 pound spinner. This is your cobias, sharks, kingfish. What else, Amanda? Um, offshore pitching at mahis. Mahis, every, this is an everything rod. You could um, take this to the hump, troll with tunas for it. If you like to troll with a spinning rod, that you could definitely troll with this yep. as well. So it is our, like I would say, definitely a do-it-all rod. 15 to 30 pound range, which is pretty much a do-it-all range. And if you did want to take it for yellowtail snappers, you 100% could. I would say it's a little bit heavy, but you can definitely use it. This here is our yellowtail snapper rod, which is basically a step down from the do it all rod. So instead of 15 to 20, 15 to 30 pound, this is a 10 to 17 pound. That would be ideal for snapper fishing. It's the exact same rod that Amanda's fishing with, which is the pink one. Yes. Obviously, obviously we won't be pink doing ones. pink and turquoise. We are going to be doing red and black. Those are our colors. These pink and turquoise rods were just a fun touch we did for ourselves. So it is the same rod that you've seen us fish with. You guys have asked about it multiple times. We're actually like extremely obsessed with the blank. We love it, the way it acts. I mean, it's Here, Amanda. extremely Give light the tackle. Hit back up. Just don't let me lose my lose Pull my up pitch. on it. There you Look go. Look at that, you guys. It's extremely light tackle, but my favorite part about it is we've caught yellowtail snappers on this and we've caught big Kobe on this rod. So, and big kingfish. So um, I love this rod so much. It's very light tackle, but it can handle a lot. We're on! We gotta fish on! We gotta fish on. <laughs> on the <gasps> oh, snapper rod. The it's light the rod. snapper rod. You ready? Oh my guys, gosh. Check it out. Pull up. It's a bonnet head. Okay, Amanda, this we gotta is, talk about this. Ooh, he's a fighter. Here we go. Here, let's fight him a little bit. Let's see what that rod looks like. Well, oh, yeah. There you go. Unfortunately, he's up. He's kind of tired out already. He, he's not really giving us much action, but you can see the bend in that rod. I love how the tip. Is some nice and nice and flexible, but you but, can still see the strength in the back. Yes, absolutely. There he okay. goes. There he goes. Oh yeah, you can see that now, can't you? Oh yes. Definitely. All right. So it's really funny. We should get this shark release. We got a little bonnet head right now. Um, he ate a crab, and we've had something that's been munching and stealing every crab, and we haven't been able to figure it out. Well, I think we have our crab stealer. We got our crab stealer. Our crab stealer. It's a bonnet head shark. To my surprise, I was expecting a permit. African pompano, cobia. cobia, but not a shark to eat crabs. Here we have our beautiful bonnet head shark. All right, guys, let's talk about these bonnet heads. They look like hammerheads. If you can see the, basically the, the eyeballs on either side of its face, it looks like but a hammerhead. It's not quite. But this is pretty much full grown. This is a full grown bonnet head shark. Their head is not quite as hammery. It's a little bit more- um, Like a bonnet. You no, know, it reminds me of a, a shallop. Shallop. A shovel. shovel, the shape of a shovel. Yes. Their head is the shape of a shovel as opposed to hammerheads have that really distinct, um, I don't know what they're called, but you know, really distinct. The hammer, hammer The hammer, head. hammer head. So <laughs> this is our bonnet head shark. Check out those teeth. Don't want to get your tromper stuck in there, but we should definitely get him back in the water. ASAP. So Emily, you want to hand me the D-hooker? Sure. I'm definitely going to use a D-hooker today. This will D-hook easy. Actually, oh. There you go. There we go. Emily just freed him using the D-hooker. Ready to say goodbye? Ready. To Mr. Bonnethead? 
he's off. There he goes. Nice job. We got the skunk off the boat with the bonnet head shark. That might be the first bonnet head shark I've caught out here. In a uh, long time. In a, in a really long, last time we caught a bonnet head shark, we were fly fishing. So that's kind of a nice change today on a crab. That's new too. That's a first for me. We're on. We're on. We're on. We're on, um, on the. Whoa, guys. Whoa. Oh, we got a little, it looks like a red grouper. Check it out. You ready, Amanda? Let's bring this guy in the boat. <gasps> there he oh, is. Oh my goodness, so cute. Okay, he's not a keep. Well, either way, even if he was a keeper, red grouper, groupers, all groupers are out of season anyways. So let's take a look at him. He is, this is a red grouper and you can tell a red grouper is a red grouper because they have this honestly orangish red color, but they also have these white spots, which kind of looks like snowy. It's similar to a snowy, but just a little more red. And of course we're only in 20 feet of water. You will see your snowy groupers in much, much deeper water. Um, upwards of a thousand feet of water for your snowy groupers. So ready to release this red grouper in 20 feet of water. And that was the first fish on the <laughs> offshore or not offshore. Sorry, the saltwater do, do it all rod. Fishing rod. Here we go. Ready? Here he goes. Swims away. That was fast. He's gone. Nice job. You ready? What? Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Ready? 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 What do you have? I got a fish on. We got a fish on. <laughs> Let's see. What? Wait. Oh. Oh. Guys, oh. do you see that? It's a little lane okay, snapper. Okay, so we caught a baby lane snapper. I'll get this seaweed away so you can see it. And I believe you guys saw those baby sharks chasing the lane snapper, which is a, let's show them the lane snapper, guys. And that was on the bottom rod. Yep. Yo, so we're getting lots rod. of reps in on the bottom rod, the do-it-all rod, the light tackle snapper rod, and here we go, the lane snapper just flung himself into the bucket of water. Check out this beautiful lane snapper. I love how they have this pink tail, which reminds me of a mutton snapper, along with the dot that they have right here, also a similar feature to the mutton snapper. But they have the yellow lane lines, hence the word name, lane snapper. And they are always usually much, much smaller than a mutton. They're usually much smaller. They don't really get very big. They're uh, they're even smaller than some yellowtail snappers. But let's give him a release. You ready, Amanda? This is not a keeper. <laughs> We're not gonna, even if he was, he was pretty small. Oh, there, there he goes. goes. Fish on. on. Fish on. What do you think it is, Amanda? <gasps> I don't know. I hope we get it's a zero. It's on the snapper rod. It's on the snapper the rod. 10 is to it? 17 <gasps> pound rod. Oh. That's a big lane. Big lane. Oh, oh big my god. Big lane. That's oh, a, he's a little tangled. Oh, okay. Get him in the boat. Get him in the boat. That's a really good fish. This is a it's nice, really good fish. fish, guys. Okay, hold on. Let me help you out with the hold tangle. On. He's in the braid. Fun fact: if you get tangled between braid and mono, do yourself a favor. Cut the mono. Braid goes free. Braid goes, goes free. free. All right. Let me put this fish down. We have a massive lane snapper, guys. This is the same fish as earlier, except significantly larger. <laughs> He's got measure quite the personality. Let's measure him. Let's give him so a measure. See how big he is. Pinch the tail. 13, go to the head. 13, 13 inches. inches. Guys, wow. that's a big lane. It's a big lane snapper. So pretty cool. We could keep this guy if we wanted to, but I think we're going to let him go because we have so much fish in our freezer. Let me get the dehooker out first. You ready? Yes. We have the hook removed. We are going to get this guy back in the water. Ooh, okay. Swims away. I knew it was gonna do that. He was a lively fish. That was a really nice size lane snapper. Emily, I think we found a lane snapper spot. We did. This is the first time we're fishing the spot. We found a new spot marked in our bottom machine. So it's always fun when you do that and you get to experiment. I'm getting nibbles. He hasn't taken it yet. But if you ever want to fish with a conventional bottom rod, not a typical spinning rod, basically what I'm doing is if I wasn't watching the rod, I would have it in just light enough drag so that way if a fish grabbed it, he could come and pull it. But I'm sitting with it. Okay, see that? Watch that. Did Ooh. you see that? No, we missed it. That? I don't okay. know. Maybe we got it. The line it. ripped out of my hand, which the means line. that the fish grabbed it. And I'm not rushing the reel on it because you want him to get a chance to eat. But you ready? Yes. Reel. See what it is. Did you hook him? Oh, man. Ooh. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Okay, finally. We're on. We're on. All right, here we go. What do we have? I think we got something a little bit of size to it this time. Oh yes, we definitely do. Pretty exciting. Keep reeling, Amanda. Lift up, reel down. It's almost like he has me in bottom though. Did he get you in bottom? Kind of looks like it, doesn't it? Yeah, which is odd because I didn't think we were right on top of the wreck, but maybe we are. There's some structure right there. So 
We had a fish pull me into bottom, but why don't we just appreciate the spiral wrapped rod guides. Oh yes, the spiral wrapped. So you can see them. What's happening is naturally the guides are pointing the rod down, going with gravity, reduces torque on your rod, makes it much easier for the angler to reel and focus on the job. Unfortunately, this fish pulled us into bottom. Well, let's do the trick, Amanda. What's we're gonna, the trick? Yeah, we're gonna do the trick. So the trick is dump it in free spool. And what we do, release all the we pressure. Release all the pressure. And we let the fish think that the fish is free. So the idea is that he swims out from the bottom of the rock. I'm not really entirely sure the fish is still on here, but either way, the idea is to release the pressure, let the fish swim free, um, get him to swim out from under the rock, maybe wait sometimes a minute, sometimes more. Um, since we're in pretty shallow water, I'm probably gonna lock it up soon. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lock it up, I'm gonna reel extremely fast to try to pull this fish out of bottom. You ready? I'm ready. Let's give it a go. You got out? I got out. Amanda got out! It worked! Get nope, your... not oh, quite. Nope, not nope. quite. Can you work your way to the right or left, Amanda? Kind not really, but I do feel like we moved a little. We did move a little. Interesting. Let's give it another go. One more go, but if not, might have to just break this one off the bottom. Last time, if we can't get out, I'm just gonna pull this out of bottom myself. It's so interesting. Keep reeling. I don't think the fish is there. Yeah, you must be in some form of structure. We're in something Here, odd. let's reel it up, Amanda. No. Huh? Bend the rod. Uh-huh. Let's demonstrate how we know it's in bottom and not a big okay, fish. Okay, so if it, see how it's in bottom, the rod tip's not doing anything. The only thing you see the rod tip doing is moving with the waves and the boat. If there were a fish on there, you'd see the rod tip looking something like this. You can kind of see that? I mean, that's the best example I could give. I'm just tapping the bottom of the rod, but you'll see taps. You know, and when you see those taps, that's how you know there's a fish and bottom. But since there aren't any taps, I'm gonna go ahead and say this is just bottom. I'm gonna reel up to it, rod straight, pull back. There we go, we're free. We're out of Let's bottom. see what we got. Let's see what we have left. We got our whole rig back. Got everything back. Awesome, even Perfect. the hook. Oh Another. my gosh. Watch the motors, watch the motors. <sighs> Keep reeling. We're here. Let's see what it is. Whoa, it's a shark! It's another shark! It's another shark! Alrighty. Keep reeling, man. Let's see if we can see him Keep again. Reeling. Oh! <laughs> he leaped Next, out of the uh, air! That kind of would be that is an Atlantic, Atlantic sharp, sharp nose. nose. This guy's a little bit on the bigger side, so I'm definitely not gonna grab him with my hands. Here, Amanda. Why don't you grab the D hooker for me? Grab the D hooker so you guys can see the Atlantic sharp nose have these white have spots. The white spots, and that's the clear identification. They don't get much bigger than this. They're frequently caught in the Gulf, sometimes offshore on the wrecks as well. So we're gonna let him go. Swims away. Swims away strong and fast. Okay, here we go. Here we go. You ready, Amanda? I'm ready. Reel. And fish on. Fish on. The bite is so fast today. Ooh, oh, oh, another nice. lane. Another good lane snapper. Getting, we have some nice, some nice lanes. lane snappers at this spot. That is. Pretty exciting. Beautiful lane snapper. Let's go ahead. We're gonna just go straight with the D hook. Give me into the ocean. Go on, little guy. There he goes. Swims away strong and almost out of chum. Gotta get some more chum in that chum block. In that chum ring. Ring. <laughs> you ready? Are you ready? I'm ready. Give it a reel. Alright. We're on. We, we got him on. Are on. We got a fish on. We got something on. Not giving me much action. Got something little. I caught. <laughs> I caught it. It's a grunt. It's a grunt. We got a grunt. We got a teeny tiny grunt. All right, let's show why a grunt is a grunt, Amanda. Good idea. This here, whoo, this here is a grunt, and a telltale sign that it's a grunt is the blue vertical, sorry, horizontal, horizontal lines on his face. They also tend to make a grunting noise. He's not really making it right now, but you'll literally hear him grunt, 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 grunt. But, but he's, he's a little baby. And I'm home. Also, Let him home. bright orange mouth. Oh yes, the bright orange inside of their mouth. That's a telltale sign that we have a grunt. Okay, we got him. We got him. We got him. Look at the we action in the rod. There we go. Finally got to bend this rod a little bit more. Whew, getting a little bit of fight in here. Let's see, 
Wow. We have, wow, another big lane. These lanes are really good fighters. They are putting on a show for us and there's really good size to them, which is pretty fun and exciting. We don't catch lanes like this every day. So I'm really glad we found this new fishing spot. Do you like lanes better than yellowtail snappers for eating? Um, I don't know, do you? You seem I say, to think I you think do. I think I do, yes. Really? It kind of hurts me that we're letting them go because we don't have any lane snapper in our freezer. I know. But we have a lot of fish in our freezer, so. Ready? Ready. Here's our beautiful lane snapper. Swims home. While we take a break from the fishing because it's been absolutely insane, let's talk about this do-it-all spinning rod, the 15 to 30 pound rod. Here it is. Let's go over all the details. First and foremost, let's start with the butt. The rod butt is, it's a gimbal butt, but it's a soft gimbal. And again, in our past videos, we've talked about the soft gimbal is great because when you have rods that spend a lot of time in your hip, you're gonna want it soft. We have that also on our light snapper rods. Yes, here we go. These are the light rods. These are the heavier spinning rods and it's on our bottom rods. Pretty much every rod except for the trolling rods because the trollers, like we had talked about, or, I don't know if we talked about that. Did we talk about that? The trollers, the trolling rods go in and out of rod holes. Yes, a we lot. talked about it. Okay, we did. Moving on, we have the rear grip and the foregrip, and this is EVA foam or EVA foam. It's very durable foam, and we like it because, like we said, when you're going in and out of rod holders, you don't have to worry about the foam getting damaged. This here is the real seat, which is graphite. It's a graphite real seat. It allows for the rod to be heav heavier, opposite, lighter. 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 That's the whole point to it. Moving on to the rod itself is the rain shadow blank. The blank is literally the rod itself, the part that bends and catches the fish. This is a composite rod, which means it's a combination of glass and graphite. Now the glass is what gives you the strength, but the graphite gives you the sensitivity and it also makes it more light. The good thing about the composite rods is you get the best of both worlds and the glass will actually bring the price down a little bit, making it more of a overall best of both worlds rod. If you had an all graphite rod, they are great, but the price goes up and they're not as durable. So you do need to be mindful of that. If you hit them, tips break. And I will also add that there are certain rods that a graph, a full graphite rod is just not practical. There exactly. are, you need, we need that glass in there as well. So this is our composite. So far we've been naming it our do-it-all rod. This rod here is the 10 to 17 pound rod. It is the rod. little it's basically sister. The, the baby version. It's the baby of this version. One. Yes. So this is more if you're going out and specifically targeting yellowtail snappers, lane snappers, maybe you're fishing off of a dock, maybe you're you're just, just you just want a light rod that you can take with you. Like look how light this is, guys. I mean, I don't know how, how much it demonstrates it, but it's very light. Hold it with very like easy two fingers. Well, I definitely can, it's just a matter of balancing it. There we go, two there fingers. Go. Super light. <laughs> so pretty much it's the same rod, the same type of grips, the same butt, the same real seat. It's just the lighter version dedicated for snappers. If you have kids, you wanna put kids on some fish and obviously they don't need a heavy rod. This is like the perfect kids starter fishing rod. Definitely. We hope you guys enjoy watching us fish with our prototype Gale Force rods. We're super, super excited to have them coming out soon. We will definitely put some information in the description box for how you can be notified when they become available. We are getting months away from it and we're so excited. So thanks for watching. Make sure you follow Gale Force Twins on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok.